Welcome back everybody to another episode of Take Back Control Tuesday. Now I can't tell you what the outcome is gonna be for each and every one of you, but what I can tell you is for the next hour and 40 minutes, the time we're gonna to spend together, if you apply what you learn, this will change your financial future. If you're here, that means you're ready for change. And tonight, that's exactly what we're gonna deliver. I've got a special guest for you. His name's Jason Sippel. He is a master of what you're gonna learn. But what are you going to learn? Well, Jason's gonna teach you three things. He's gonna teach you how to take back control of your money by being your own bank. And then he's also gonna teach you how to build wealth through your own debts and expenses. That'll be the second thing you learn. And the third thing you'll learn, hence the cars, you're gonna learn how to get all the money back for every single car that you ever buy, drive, and own. And before you get into it, one last favor, just click that button right there, the subscribe button. It would do me a huge favor. And also, right above is a little bell. Smash that bell so that every time I put new content out, you'll be notified. So I don't want to waste any more time. It's time for Jason to really show you all about the infinite banking concepts. Let's roll. Take back the soul. Tuesday. Tuesday night. Tuesday? Take Back Control Tuesday. We are here together again. Excited for you all to be here. Who here? I want you to, you know, make sure you're participating in the chat. Who here wants more money? Who wants a little bit more freedom? Who here wants to feel financially free? What would that feel like? What would that do to your relationships with yourself, with your family, with your kids, with those in your community? Who wants to feel more freedom? So I'm gonna let you in on a little known fact. The wealthiest families and visionaries like the Rockefellers, <clears throat> Walt Disney, and even, even you know, trailblazers like Ray Kroc have been using this strategy, the infinite banking strategy for ages to build and preserve their empires. This strategy is simple, it's legal, and it's something that each and every one of you have access to. And all of it starts with just changing one thing. Where does your money go first? This start paying yourself is shocking because we give away so much of our money without even understanding or knowing what's happening. We're groomed to give up our control of our money to the banks, to Wall Street, to the government to the institutions, and we want to individualize money again. Do you guys want to know how you can recapture and recycle all of the money that's going out with your debts and bring it back into your family? Do you want to know how you can buy all of your cars that you're going to ever buy, drive, and own through the infinite banking process? Do you want to know how you can turn your debts into assets and leverage for the future to build more wealth, to put your little green men to work. And like Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. The answer is right there for every single one of us. All we have to do is look what the wealthiest families have done, look at what the banks are doing, and model it. The, the blueprint is there. So now, why haven't we already done this? Because typically, we're stuck. There's a paradigm shift. There's a habit. Again, we've been groomed to give up control of the money. We've been taught to assume the risk. And all we have to do is look at the clues that have been left, the breadcrumbs that have been left. And today we're gonna go through these examples. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step that something that was unbelievable to me just four years ago, someone that had a nine to five job, a family, was working my tail off, but never seemed to get ahead, I was stuck. I'm gonna show you how by changing this one thing, that there is a future of financial freedom for you and your family. Again, we're gonna go through the real life applications and I'm gonna show you how you can go from being someone that's been in consumer land to someone that's here. And now you guys are already the, the 5%. You're already the ones that have done something different. So let's jump into this. You've already given me your most valuable resource, which is your time, your energy, and your attention. So I want you to imagine all of us together are in a room and we're looking at 118 year olds. And we ask the 118 year olds like, hey, 
Who here is going to be successful by the time you retire? Their hands are going to shoot up and they're going to be so excited. They're going to be like, me, me, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be the next Bill Gates. And today is actually Mark Zuckerberg's 40th birthday. I'm going to be the next Mark. I'm going to be the next person that has this idea that changes the world, the next Elon. And the sad truth is, even with all of their vigor, with their dreams, with their hopes, with their energy, when we get to their retirement age, only five out of a hundred of those kids will be financially stable. One will be wealthy, five will be financially stable, and the rest will be like most Americans today. And why is that? It's because, it's because what we're gonna show you today, it's because what we're doing with our money today and the pattern that has to be disrupted. Like, look at this shocking statistic. How can only five out of 100 people be financially secure at retirement age? We live in the greatest country, the freest country, the country with the most opportunity in the world. People are dying to come here. People are coming here from all over the world and they still want to be here because there's so much opportunity. But, but there's also a lot of grooming, a lot of habits that have us with no financial security. This is why you see all of, when you go to any of the grocery markets, to the store, to the fast food restaurants, and there's a lot of the elderly, the people that should be retired that don't have that financial freedom. But since you guys are already here, I already know that you're gonna be in that 5%. You're gonna be one of the five. Let's make it 10 of the, 10 of the 100. 20 of the 100, how many people do we have here? Let's make it every single person here having their financial freedom. It's like Will Rogers said, the problem in America isn't so much what people don't know, it's what people think they know that just ain't so. The truth is, I've said this a few times already, <clears throat> what we've been taught about money might not be the truth. <sighs> Shocking. I just need you to keep an open mind today because in this webinar, I'm going to challenge your thinking. I'm going to show you a better path forward. But at the end of the day, we want to teach you how to fish. Myself, the money mentors, the money multiplier, we want to teach you how to fish. I don't want to fish for you. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of not patient enough to fish. I want to show you how to fish so you take back control. You build, keep, and create more wealth, security, and that feeling for your family. So let's dive into this. Who am I? Why do I get to present to all of you amazing people today? My name is Jason Sippel. We're going to rewind to a moment uh, in time. We'll call it about three and a half years ago. Doing what I love, helping people at a mastermind as part of the leadership team. And <clears throat> I was standing in the back of the room and I was already having a little bit of internal conflict. And the guy who's a leader of the group was doing one of these exercises. And I want you guys to kind of imagine this, maybe take some notes on this, like what pops for you in this moment? Because there's rules about money we have. And he started saying, <clears throat> I want you to fast forward a year. Everything's possible. You are capable of changing your life, of being whoever you want to be, of really serving other people and really having, doing, going to where you want to go. What are those big dreams? What are the things you want for your family? Where do you want to be? And just getting everyone super fired up. Everyone was like, ah, I'm going to be a million, like those kids, a billionaire, a billionaire. And I started crying. I broke down, tears pouring down my face. And I walked up to one of my teammates, Andres, and uh, one of my you know partners in this organization. He's like, Sip, what's wrong, man? I'm like, dude, I'm failing. I'm failing my boys. Uh, I'm failing my wife. I'm here with you guys in New Jersey. I'm away from them. I'm making a third of what I was when I was the director for a $600 million company, an equity-backed company. And <clears throat> I realized I didn't have a financial philosophy. And so I came back, <clears throat> I did some deep searching and that, that dark cave, that fear I had around money, about being an entrepreneur, about all these things. When I asked for help, <clears throat> You're going to see the book on the next page. But when I asked for help, my mentor, who's a fiduciary with 40 wealth management offices, actually one of my mentors, because you should have many, but a guy who I really knew, knew this stuff, handed me R. Nelson Nash's book, 
And that book changed my life forever. It's why I'm presenting to you. It's why my family has recaptured over $130,000 in bad debt in the last year, 13 months. You know, why our family's protected for <clears throat> generations to come and what we're doing to bring this to all the other families out there that need this. We need this as a country. And so this concept that I'm talking about is not new. You know, a lot of people have talked about it, and you guys might know some of them. You might have read some of these books. And if you haven't, yeah, maybe some books that for homework for you to do. So, so far, let me know if you've heard of these guys. So anyone here heard here of Robert Kiyosaki? Can I get some eyes in the chat just to keep the engagement going? You know, Robert Kiyosaki in Second Chance, he specifically talks about whole life. One of our peers actually has a letter from Robert Kiyosaki talking about the specially engineered whole life that he uses in his investments, in his life, and the things that he does. You know, most of us know Rich Dad and Poor Dad, but Second Chance talks about the this opportunity for us to build that financial foundation. And then there's this other guy, the guy that I owe my, all my changes, the starting of this to this gentleman is Tony Robbins, the big guy. He changed my life. He woke me up. He shook me to my core to the point where when I came home, my wife gave me a nickname and called me Captain America because I had changed so drastically. I went from hating electric electronic dance music, EDM, to loving it within four days. Go figure. And then you have R. Nelson Nash, this is going to be a gift to my nephew who graduates high school next week. Becoming your own banker. If you don't have it, go get it. You need to have this book. And then there's about my partners. Some of my other mentors, I call them friends. You've got Brant and Chris, who this is their modern day version of becoming your own banker. They're going to map out the millionaire mystery, which is what we're talking about today. And then Chris has private money guide because why? We know that money must stay in motion to make more money. So let's dive into this. Let's go to the next thing. We're going to talk about this intriguing concept, the backwards bicycle. Who learns fast? In your, in your mind answer, in your notebook, in the chat, who learns fast? Our kids. Our kids learn incredibly fast. You know, when you're, when you're little, a couple days and you're riding down the street on the, your bicycle. And for me, that's your first freedom. I love riding to this day. I'm almost 50 and it's still my favorite thing to do. I go for a bike ride. My wife's like, you gotta go ride, Jason. Makes you happy. But when you're riding that bike, they say, hey, it's just like riding a bike. Have you guys heard that saying before? It's just like riding a bike. But when you get on your bike and you turn right, what happens? The bike goes to the right. If you turn left, it goes to the left. Well, this guy decided to make this contraption that if you turn right, the bike goes left and vice versa. It's not easy. And we have these deep, deep patterns in our brain that are ingrained there. And if you go want to see something funny, go ahead and watch us. It'll teach you something. It'll show you the patterns that we have. Like if all of you, how many people here, boy, do you think you could ride that bike? You feel confident. You could jump on that bike. If we give you a hundred grand, you could ride it. Like we would all say, yes, I would say yes. And then I'd fall on the ground, make sure you had it. Boyd says he's confident in a no. So it's the same with our money patterns. What if I've told you what you've been taught about money is wrong? Shifting your mindset may be difficult, but think of it as learning the backwards bicycle. Again, go watch this on YouTube. Check the facts I give you today on YouTube. Write this down. Give yourself to permission to acknowledge that you might not have know how to do this dot 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 yet you might not know how to do it yet so let's look at why aren't more people successful why is it that 95 percent of people during a lifetime of working our tails off aren't financially successful the wealth killers taxes inflation volatility interest rates and I always say money has two parts. It's the mind and the math, right? It is the FUD. Like I have a friend, uh, Ben, who wrote Plucking the FUD, F-U-D. Fear, uncertainty, doubt, mindset. And it's following the status quo. It's thinking that, you know, I'm going to go out and do what my parents did. They weren't financially free, free but I don't know a better way, so I'm going to do what they did. Uh, and that fear, that 
uncertainty of what is a better way, the fear of things being too good to be true, of what we're taught and wanting to trust those that we love. Like you don't want to go trust your crazy uncle that doesn't have money, but you know, always seems to have a, a nice car, but always has debt. You want to find someone that's had a success. Those authors we talked about earlier, Chris and Brent, the money multiplier, us, the people that are practicing. You don't want to go out <clears throat> and learn from someone who's literally saying, well, I think I know how to do that. No, you want the gold medalist. You want somebody, like think about the people you hire in your company. Do you guys, I know I'm going a little off on this, but think about this. I just heard this at a mastermind. I loved it. When you go hire for that important position for your company, for your business, for the thing that you're passionate about and bring to the world, that problem you're solving, that service you're providing, that item that you're, that you're giving someone, is do you want to hire someone that says, yeah, theoretically, I know how marketing works? Or do you want a person that sits down and goes, hey, let me show you how this works. Let me show you what I've done in the past to scale this company from X to X. You want the gold medalist. It's the same here. You want to be around the people that have done this, been there, and can show you all the steps of building, keeping, and creating more wealth. So that is the next step. So let's talk about the mysteries of money, right? Money is made to be way more complicated than you, than you need to think about it. That didn't make any sense, but stay, bear with me. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask you guys a series of questions. And I want you to answer in the chat. What is money? What is money to each of you? What does money mean to you? Tess is on it today. That's it. Money is simply a means of exchange. Nothing more, nothing less. We pay money for our candy bar, uh, candy bar for money. Money for car, car for money, money for house, house for money. It's just a means of exchange. It doesn't really have a value. This weekend, my son was a rock star at a garage sale, we sold $200 worth of stuff. And I guarantee the rest of the stuff's getting donated, but people paid what it was worth to them. $20 for an old iPad, a dollar for an old shirt. So next question for you, you guys rock the first one. What is the definition of money? What company uses compound interest? What company uses compound interest? You guys probably screamed out, banks, Jason, the banks do. Well, they don't. There you go, Bianca knows. <clears throat> No company, actually, Bianca, it's a great answer because they will pay uninterrupted guaranteed compounding interest, but no company actually uses compound interest as part of their business model. Why? Because money, as part of the natural law, money has to stay in motion to make more money. That's like water. We don't drink from a stale pond. We only drink from a river that's flowing. It's like our bodies, if we don't move our bodies, if we don't keep our blood circulating, the oxygen flowing, then we're probably not very healthy, right? We're probably not going to qualify for this. So here's another question. Are your dollars worth more today or in the future? And this goes back to the candy bar example. When I was little, <clears throat> I could go in, think about this. I could go buy a candy bar or maybe two candy bars for a buck, for a dollar. I could get a gallon of gas for 95 cents when I started driving back in the 90s, right? Oh my God, dad, you were born in the 1900s. Yes. And so if we forward to today, you go take that same dollar that you've been, you know, Dave Ramsey style, saving it in a can somewhere buried in your yard. You pull it up, you're like, hey, I'm going to buy, go buy that Mounds bar, that Snickers bar. You might be able to buy half of a bar today compared to what you could buy then. So our money is worth more today. We want you to use your valuable dollars today before they lose value in the future. Taxes, going up or down in the future, up or down. I have a crystal ball here. I usually don't use it, but today I'm gonna give you guys a secret. If you go to, if you go to usdebtclock.org, look this up, it'll freak you out a little bit, but it gives you tons of interesting facts, especially if you're someone who loves math, loves numbers, you'll see as a country, we are $34 trillion in debt. Within the next two years, we'll be another $10 trillion in debt. The government can't make money, people. They make money by either taxing more things, casting a wider net, or raising taxes. So it might not feel like it because of all the craziness in the last year and a half, but taxes are still historically low. So we want to pay 
taxes on the seed, not on the harvest. On today's dollar, not on what it grows to in the future. That's right, Greg, almost a trillion dollars every 100 days. That is insane. And what do you guys know about your retirement account? Some of you, I bet you know a lot. You know where it's being invested. You, you're following it. You get it. But for the rest, for people like myself, I used to go meet Schwab every year and they say, hey, Jason, great job on contributing the max amount. How do you feel about taking on more risk? What does that mean? Okay, Jason, well, if you don't want to take on more risk, how do you feel about retiring 20 years later? Oh, man, you weren't listening. You talk about someone who felt not seen, not heard, and not understood. I was like, I don't want to see you ever again. I, want, I told you I want to retire at 55. Now you're going to tell me I got to retire at 75? Like, that's nuts. What's behind door number C? Until I started asking better questions, when I hit financial rock bottom, mentally and financially, and started asking better questions, now I'm here with you guys. So if you guys don't know what's happening in your retirement account, it's, it's, it starts to wonder. And remember, I'm not giving financial advice, but when do you want to stop locking your money up in financial prison, hoping that one day, someday, it's going to work out and start taking back control of that money today? And so let's go over how all of this magic happens. It is called the money multiplier method. And first, we're going to talk about the machine. I've already given it away in the beginning of the presentation. So we're going to talk about the machine. We're going to talk about the marathon. Now, who here, anybody here run a marathon? Can I get some eyes in the chat if we got any marathoners here or maybe half marathoners? I know Tess is planning on and doing a run here sometime in the next year. All right, Lucy. So bucket list. Here, here is a secret of life for all of you. Free. It's a free secret. Pick a date. Find a thing. Sign up for it, put skin in the game. That'll get you 95% closer to whatever goal you're trying to achieve. I believe that you don't run a marathon, because I don't really love running as much as other sports, until after you swim 2.4 miles and ride at least 112 miles on a bike. Then you run a marathon. So it's long-term thinking. That's why I'm taking time to emphasize it, because it's critically important when it comes to the infinite banking concept. And finally, the millionaire mystery. We want to see, we all, you would be shocked if you sat down and figured out how much money you've earned in your lifetime up to now. Then you look in your accounts and see how much you actually have. Once you understand how to change that one thing, we can map out your millionaire mystery, your multi-millionaire mystery. <clears throat> and I was in a presentation a couple of weeks ago where they said there's going to be the first one person trillion dollar company here in the next five years because of all the advancements with AI and everything else. So there is infinite amount of money, abundant money out there in the world. It's up to us to go and create. Chris would love it if you could hear me say that. Go create, go solve problems for people. That's where our value comes in. So let's talk about this machine. What is this magical, magical machine? It is nothing more than a dividend paying, cash rich, whole life policy from a mutually owned company. And now you guys are veterans, most of you. How many new people do I have with me today that have just heard this for the first time? Can I get some eyes in the chat? All right, we got one, we got two. <clears throat> so we got some new folks, we got some experienced folks. This is your basic, basic money multiplier class. So don't run out of the room. So no one ran away. So thank you, Tiana, Norma, Carolyn. You didn't run out and say, oh my God, it's whole life. Like you didn't, you didn't freak out. That's good. Now I want to, I'm actually going to skip this next part because I don't want to give up the next punchline to the next exercise. Ooh, it worked. So I'm going to do this T-chart. Grab your pens, grab your paper, your pencil, your crayon, whatever you want to write with and draw yourself a T. Top left, the bank. Top right, the policy. Yes, welcome to everyone who's near, new here. That's amazing that you're spending your time learning this stuff with us. And we're gonna write under bank and under policy, we're gonna write liquidity. Let's define liquidity. Liquidity just means that the money's not locked up in financial prison. You can use it, you can get it, you can 
go buy the things you need to buy or invest in your business or invest in something else that's going to create cash flow. It is available, not locked up. Under bank, 0.07%. That's the average savings rate that a savings account is, is paying you today. Now, under policy, we're going to write 3.25%. That is a contractually guaranteed rate locked in for your whole life that's uninterrupted and compounding interest. Under bank, wah, 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 that 0.07% is taxable. It's going to go into your tax returns. That 38 cents that you made, it's taxable. You haven't noticed because it hasn't been big enough to really hurt. But even if you had it in some kind of money market account where it's three and a half, four, five percent, it's still taxable. With the policy, it's tax-free. Growth, distribution, loans, tax-free. Next, we have unstable. You don't know what I mean by unstable? Think about the fractional banking system. Look at, starting last spring, the Silicon Valley Bank was the first, and they bailed them out because of all the stuff, Carson knows all about this living out in California, but look at the fractional banking system first. Look at the Silicon Valley Bank. Look at all the banks that toppled afterwards. We had some more last summer, some more this fall, where banks, if you make a run on the bank, they can't support. They're, they're just, the money's going out, which I'll show you more how they're making money later. And boy, yes, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we go through this with a policy stable. All five of the A plus rated or better, that's 15 ratings, they're in the top two ratings. A plus rated or better, mutually owned dividend paying company. So that means like the Green Bay Packers, the people with policies own the company. It's a mutually owned company, have been stable, profitable for 100 to 160 years. The one I'm giving an example of here with the 3.25% guarantee is one of the five companies we work with and they have been profitable for 147 years consecutively. Bank, unprotected. Unprotected means that if you're a business owner, exactly, Boyd, someone gets hurt on your property, they can sue you for liens and judgment. They can get that money in your savings account. A good attorney, under policy, protected from liens and judgment. We're looking at the five living benefits, right? Liquidity, access to the money, tax-free growth, guaranteed contractual growth, stability, <clears throat> working with the bank's banks, and protected from liens and judgment. Under bank, we get no death benefit, no multiple. <clears throat> Daniel says, try, try whiskey. <clears throat> I don't think we have any in the house right now. <clears throat> but under, under my, I think my wife's going to get me whiskey. We'll see. Uh, this is recorded, by, by the way. And under... Policy, your second guarantee, the cherry on top, as Daniel knows, because he does have one of these specially engineered whole life and one's on his daughter's as well, is a tax-free death benefit. The punchline I wasn't going to ruin, where do the banks keep their money? The banks keep their money, drum roll, in specially engineered whole life. So when you look at this chart, and you can hang this chart on your fridge, and I'm back, here we go. Where do they... Where do banks keep their money? They keep their money in specially engineered whole life. That's why there's so many VPs. The VPs don't really even have jobs. <clears throat> they are just another asset to the bank to have more cash-rich policies, to have all the guarantees here on the policy side, over $202 billion in specially engineered whole life. So where should we, we, us Americans, us 5% that's here, the 61 folks that are with me right now, where should we keep it our money? In our policies. Remember, we're going from institution to individual. <clears throat> now we're going to play a game. This might blow your mind. This took me 19 times to get. We're going to talk about how does your money flow. Now, you've been like Sally Saver. You have some responsibility, right? You are someone that's responsible. You're paying yourself first. You have discipline. You're not practicing the pain of regret. And you want to buy a new vehicle. <clears throat> now, you've been keeping your money at my bank. I'm Jason, the banker. 
and we're going to get a $25,000 car. Remember, the numbers are for the example, if you're buying a Ferrari, add a zero, right? I've got a doctor who bought a new Ferrari with cash. When he learned about this, he was like, ah, oh, I wish I'd done that first. <clears throat> but anyhow, so now you've saved up over the last three years, $25,000, and I'm a super generous bank, <clears throat> and I'm paying you 4% on your money and you come in to me and you're like jason i want to take i want to interrupt whatever 0.07 percent interest i'm making here or four four percent right that i'm paying here at your bank you're really generous and i want to take that money and go out and buy this red new car that i have been just eyeing i just really want to get it and i've been really patient i've been working really hard and I say, well, hold on, hold on. I get that, Sally, you wanna go buy that new car. That's awesome, congratulations, I'm super happy for you. But how about this? You leave your money here for <clears throat> another five years for the length of the duration of your car. I'll give you a loan at 6% for 60 months. So you're gonna keep your money with me, Jason the Banker, at 4% compounding for the next five years. And at the same time, I'm going to loan you 25 grand, you know, against your money. And you're going to pay me 6% for that vehicle. Do you think, as Jason the Bank, and uh, Jason the Banker, an honest man, will you make money? Because I'm telling you that you're going to make money in this scenario where you're growing at 4% and you're paying 6%. Will you make money in this scenario? Yes or no? Tiana says no. See, Tiana, you're with, you're with me back in the back in the day. Lucy says yes. She's seen this before. Good job, Lucy. So, yes, you're going to make money, and here's why. Your monthly payments at six percent is going to be four hundred eighty three dollars. <throat> the future value of your twenty five grand at four percent is thirty thousand five hundred twenty five. So, if you multiply if you multiply that, that the payment times 60 months, you're getting almost 29,000. You've made, during that period of time, $1,526. So if you guys go grab a time value money calculator, you can figure this out yourself. You can go and play around with all the scenarios, make it 250,000, make it eight years, make it 10 years. But the purpose of showing you this is when we look at interest rates, the question we want to keep asking ourselves, and I write this down, please, is what is my money doing in this situation? Because it's unique. It's unique, and it's a principle that we're going to understand. So now, <clears throat> yes, exactly. So can you imagine when I drive around or when you practice this principle, Bianca, imagine driving around, you see all these nice Teslas, and I see, you know, here in Orlando, see all these Porsches and Lambos and Ferraris, and I always think if that person bought that through infinite banking, they might be making money right now on that vehicle, or at least keeping 91 cents of every dollar. And I'm already showing you stuff that I'm going to peel back the hood here in a moment in one of my favorite parts. But first, we're going to jump into the banks. Let's talk about what's happening with your money. Do you ever stop and think about when you get paid, how do you feel? Do you get excited? When you see that money come in, if you get paid bi-weekly or monthly or you're an entrepreneur and just comes in randomly, you get kind of excited. I check my account almost every day. And just to know, just because I want to, I want to, I want to build that habit of celebrating. I want to be like, yes, I help someone. I'm getting paid for my help of someone else. It's amazing. Well, let's talk about the banks. The banks have been doing this as long as you've been working. So I don't want you to get too upset here. But we're going to go through and we're going to show you how do the banks turn a liability, which is your deposit, into an asset. And they do that how? They do that by keeping the money in motion. So you're going to deposit $100,000 in your bank. And remember, I'm Jason, the nice banker. I'm paying you 4%. <clears throat> now, immediately, the bank, like I said, they can't leave the money sitting there. So what do they do? They lend it out in a secure position to someone that wants to purchase a home and they lend it at 
goes to the seller, the money comes back full circle, goes back into the bank. Now they lend it out again to someone who needs a car, a little less secure, you know, because a car is a depreciating asset when the home can go either way. Now it's at 8%, <clears throat> all right? Car dealer pays back the bank, the money comes in, the bank's like, oh, I got to move this again. I got to keep it going. So what do they do? A home remodel. Someone wants to remodel. Now they're lending it out at 9%. So remember, they're paying us 4% on our money. And they keep lending that same money out. They're multiplying the money. This is what the banks do. Money comes back from the contractor. It goes back out for a debt consolidation. Now, this is the only loan of all these that's not as secure. <clears throat> so it's a higher rate. It's more risk. Now it's 12%. Now a person's paying that monthly credit card off or they pay it off entirely. entirely. So let's go through this. So we went through all these numbers. So let's go through each of these and look at the spread the bank's making. The first one, seven, I'm going to go kind of quick here. Seven minus four is three. For the car, eight minus four is four. All right, the next one, your home or model, nine minus four is five. So proud of my second grade math. And now we got 12 minus four is eight. So add these together. We got 17, right? Hold on, whole thing. We got 20%. So with 20%, you're getting 4%. So the banks made five times as much. Is that right? <clears throat> In the chat, it's five, do they make five times as much as we have made with our money sitting there? Who thinks that's true? True or false? The banks made five times as much, right? Four to 20% is 5X, right? Well, no, they've made, they've made 500%. It's a 500% increase. On average, you can look this up on Bauer Financial, banks make 400 to 1300% on every dollar we deposit. That's why they have the nicest real estate. That's why they have the nicest clothes and the nicest cars. And what are they giving us in return when we go and deposit our money in the bank? They're giving us a dumb, dumb sucker. They're even brazen enough to tell us, look, dumb, dumb. I'm making all this money, you leaving me the money here, your money in my bank, <clears throat> and this is what I'm giving you. I mean, maybe that's not intentional, but it seems kind of too good to not have that. It's too synchronistic. That has to be true. So you want to know how the banks are making money. So let's show you the average annual pattern of spending. Like, why are the banks making so much money? Well, let's look at ourselves as a society. Let's kind of break down. This has been true since the 70s. This has not shifted much at all. And we're gonna talk about, earlier I talked about how we're groomed to give up control. We're conditioned to take on the risk and the bankers and the creditors, the institutions, the government, Wall Street are reaping the rewards. So let's look at our annual pattern of spending. So <clears throat> for every dollar we make, we're spending 20 cents of every dollar on our cars. Some people a lot more than that, but let's just do the average. The next 30 cents of every dollar goes to housing. Then 40 cents goes to everything else, leaving us, that's 90, that leaves us 10% to savings. It's we go out, we get all the things we need and want, and then whatever's left over, we save. Now, unfortunately, that 10% is way high. At, at average right now, we're making about we're saving about 3%. So let's look at the interest rate here. If What would happen if we just took back ownership of this? If we took off our consumer hat, we put on our banking hat, and now we're paying back our banks. Let's just look at the interest that we would recapture. So on average, five cents, <clears throat> right? Five cents of every dollar is going towards interest for our auto loan. So we're gonna shift that over to our savings. We're gonna add 5% to that 10. So now we're at 15. For our home, if you bought a home in the last seven years, whatever you do, <clears throat> do not go look at your statement because you will cry like I did. You, We are paying 70 to 80% in the first five to seven years to interest or more. And why? Because banks know that we move every five to seven years. So we just restart that clock on that, that percentage. 
And by the way, I do have the shot if I need it. So I don't think I'll do it. Oh, it's Johnny Walker too. It's the good stuff. So now, you know, we got 25 cents of every dollar shifting over to that side of savings. 40 cents to everything else, right? And we got five cents of that being interest. So now we've shifted that interest over and we're saving way more by just taking back control. That's what we mean by building our wealth through our existing debts and expenses. Now, remember I was talking about cars earlier? I'm going to show you how you get all the money back for every car and truck. All right, so we drive trucks down here in Florida that you'll ever buy, drive, and own. So let's peel back, lift the hood of this engine, and kind of show you guys what it looks like in the machine. We're going to talk about the premiums as deposits. Because remember, when you get paid, how does it feel? Pretty dang good. So when you're paying your system, we also want you to think of this as a premium deposit. We're not paying for an insurance that we hope we never need, like homeowners, cars, medical. We're paying ourselves for all of our financing needs. Our age doesn't matter. I've helped people that are 18. I've helped people that are 78 and everyone in between, right? It doesn't matter. And the death benefit, it's a nice cherry on top. It matters in the way that if you love someone, it is a guaranteed estate that's instantly available. But it doesn't matter for what we're doing with the financing portion of this. Like I've said before, infinite banking should be called privatized banking with a side of life insurance or total financial choice with a side of life insurance. So let's dig, dig through this together. So now remember, we have discipline, we are saving. Let's show you how you can use this machine for every car you buy, drive, and own. So we're gonna start with a deposit of $10,000 a year. This is how the other individual saved up for 25,000 earlier with our bank, same scenario. We're gonna take a loan out in year three for 25,000, that's our cash value. And now we're gonna set up repayment to ourselves of $500 a month. Remember, we're gonna pay ourselves back with interest. So it's $6,000 a year for the next five years. Now, at the end of that time, <clears throat> we're going to have put a total seven years of premium deposits, five years of paying ourselves back as the banker, right? We're being an honest banker for a total of $100,000 minus the loan. And we have $75,000, right, that we've used during that period of time that we've actually injected into it minus that. Now, if you look <clears throat> on that far right column, we still have $68,881 available, meaning that at the end of every five years, and guys, really think about this, really pay attention to what I'm saying here. You have that truck, that car, that vehicle that you bought five years ago. You've driven it. You've gotten your miles at it. It's depreciated. But now, you have 91 cents of every dollar and you know that you've used for that vehicle <clears throat> and you have the vehicle so you have the money and the vehicle have you ever purchased a car in your whole life and had the money and the vehicle at the end of five years well, i'm not just talking about selling back what you paid in cash <clears throat> i'm talking about the majority of the money you would have paid so let's look what happens now you're like hey i i've got this one car now my teenager is about to drive. I'm going to get a new car for myself and they're going to get my five-year-old vehicle, <clears throat> which is the way it should be, right? So now we're going to go and we're going to take another $25,000 loan out, but we're going to do something unthinkable. We would never teach you this. We're not going to put any money back into the policy. We're not going to make premium deposits after year seven. We don't need to, but look what happens. That cash value keeps going up every year. And so now we get to the end, we pay ourselves back over this period of time. So another $30,000, just being an honest banker. So we have the $30,000 that we put in, you know, from taking that loan out to pay ourselves back with interest minus the loan is $5,000. But look, our cash value has increased almost $24,000. You have now with your second purchase made money buying the second new car. And it's going to keep increasing every year. So does that not blow your mind? You know, at the end of this period of time, you've made money now buying a vehicle that you would have bought anyhow. Is this not, give me an eye if this is far superior than any 
any other way you can purchase a car. Thank you, Greg. That is the truth. That's why if once you see this, you can't unsee it. So now Greg's seeing this. Yeah, that's okay. It takes a little bit of time. But once you see that all you're doing is you're being two people, like right now, you are at least, you know, a daughter of someone. You are maybe a sibling, maybe a parent, you may be a spouse. We have all these different roles. But we're just learning how do we add the banking function to our lives. So now we're going to go through the three rules that you must follow to make infinite banking work for you. Number one is we got to pay ourselves first. We have to be willing to capitalize our system, meaning put cash value into our banking system to use. And I put as if your life depended on it because really kind of does. Pay yourself with interest. That's the example I just showed you. So that is going to be, you want to keep that interest in your family. Remember the example of the dollar bill. Now, <clears throat> we also want to recycle and recapture all that money. And if this works for the car or the truck you're buying, what else can it work for? Anything. Anything you can imagine. It's just called rethinking your thinking. It's the fifth principle we teach. Now let's go through another scenario. We're going to go through someone and show you how someone that turned their debts into an asset. I'm going to show you how long it would have taken them to pay off their debts if they would have done it the traditional way. And on top of that, I'm going to turn around and show you how doing it through infinite banking gives them more money back and keeps all that money in their system. So this is one of Brent's docs, one of Brent Kessler, who started the money multiplier, the founder, was a chiropractor. One of the docs he helped get out of debt, a very similar to his story. This guy was 45 years old. He had nine third-party debts, $478,000 in total debt, as you see on the screen. And so he was saving $25,000 a year. If he would have just paid down that $5,777 a month, with the $25,000 that he was saving every year, <clears throat> it would have taken him 19 years to pay off this debt. So let's look at what happens when you use a policy to pay it off. In year one, he makes his premium deposit. 25,000 in, he's instantly pulling out about 60%, so 14,000 and change instantly. Now he's gonna take that and he's gonna knock out a couple of these debts. He's gonna cut, call the, uh, Call Lowe's, Discover, Nord's, uh, and be done with it. So he's recapturing how much? $448 a month. How many here could be pretty excited about having $500 of extra cash flow back into your family system per month? Remember, this is just year one. Instantly, one change, he recaptures $6,000 almost a year. Year two, he makes his deposit again. He can get, has a little bit more cash access. He's paid himself back the $5,000 and change. Now he's got 21,000 in cash and he's gonna use that to pay off the next chunk of cards, right? So now he's paid off the next three and he's recaptured another chunk of money for a total of almost 2,000 a month, almost 24,000 a year. So now we're gonna to go to year three. Same thing, make another deposit. Remember it's uninterrupted compounding interest. Now the cash value in year three, he's already taking out more than he's depositing. Look at this folks. 25,541 available. Payments back to himself of 23,000. So only thing he did is change one thing. He's knocked out another almost two grand per month back to himself, $3,600 by year three. So, so far with the marathon, how much do we put in? Year one, 25. Year two, 25. Year three, 25. We've deposited 75,000. Now let's look at his loans. Year one, 14 and change, 16 and 25 and change, 55,000. How much is left in the policy? Do the math for me real quick. How much is left? 75 minus 55. This is another you know, brain scrambler here, but we might say 20, right? But no, there's not 20 left. We've never touched that 75,000. It's still compounding uninterrupted, getting us that guaranteed compounding interest and most likely earning us dividends too. So he's using the same money he's saving. He's saving and spending simultaneously. We go to year four, depositing 25,000. <clears> now he has a cash value of $26,304. Let's 
He's paid himself back that 3677 for 44 additional thousand. 70000 in cash. He's going to knock down payment on the condo. Not totally paid off yet. Year five, he's making another deposit. He's got 2000 extra dollars, right? Because he's already two years past when it hit its efficiency point. He's paid himself back. Now he knocks out the condo, brings that payment back. <clears throat> So now he's over $4,500 a month back to his wheel of wealth. Now in year six, he makes a $10,000 deposit. He's got $25,000. He does another policy at this point because he can't fit all of this money back into it. So he opens another policy on himself in year six. Most people are doing this within the first 12 months. But this doc, for this example, it was year six. He made payments back to himself, total cash. Now he's paid off the condo and the house and everything else within six years. And this is something I'm going to click the next slide and blow your minds. We've added this tool. We used to show you this in the mapping, in the implementation, once your policy is enforced. Now, if you're someone who's getting out of debt, we'll show you as you go through the process, as you Go through your application as you meet or do your paramedical. We will <clears throat> show you the best way to blast your debt, whether it's going to be, we'll show you how long it's going to take, how you're going to pay it. Are you going to do an avalanche? Are you going to do a snowball? What's going to be the most efficient way for you to recapture and recycle that money back to your family to protect your money and to have cash value? And we have future tools coming like the game projector. If you're someone's already has no debt, amazing. Let's go ahead and talk about how you can leverage the system to make more money. And then you also get the debt map once your policy is enforced. Because we believe, and I believe, do you guys think this is fair? Knowledge is not power. That applied knowledge is power. There you go. Craig says, Game Projector is here today and ready to go. That's awesome. So you have to apply the knowledge. Again, it goes back to earlier when I said, we don't want to fish for you. We want to teach you how to fish, but we will show you mathematically because some of us, let's face it, we love numbers, right? We love our numbers and we want to know what is, how long is it going to take? Is it going to be six years like the doctor? Is it going to be three years, two years? We'll show you how long not only does it take to pay off all your debt, but how long does it take to pay your system back? And then what do you do with the money then? We will map these things out and hold your hand while you do it. <clears throat> so my favorite question, how do you eat an elephant? I used to ask teams I led this all the time. The answer, you guys got the answer, pop it in the chat if you know, is one bite at a time. I say first you wanna have some elephant stew, elephant steak, elephant burger, elephant salad. Right, it's gonna take a long ass time to eat the elephant, but remember, this is a marathon. And the man at the top of the mountain didn't just fall there. He got there, she got there through hard work, through discipline, through learning the paradigm shift. And so at the end of the day, is it possible to owe no man, no woman, nothing? Grammatically incorrect, we don't care. The machine works for debts. It works for expenses, vacations, homes, taxes, tuition, anything you can think of, it works for. So let's show you a little bit of additional magic. If we continue to pay the homes back, remember we're paying our banking system back for the duration that we owe on them. And what happens for the condo in the house? $879 a month times $251. That's another $220,000 back into our system. Remember, we're mapping out the millionaire mystery. How do we get there? We had another 273,000. That is almost a half million dollars that we would have paid to the institution that's come back to our family. Like that's exciting. I get excited about that, but wait, it's even better. If you add the interest, you know, we're calling 4%, but it's probably more like five. You're talking about another $300,000 in interest. So now it's $750,000 that's come back to your family's wheel of wealth. So now that you know about this, now you know that everyone should do this, 
if you don't do this, you're stealing from your family, from your children, from your grandchildren. And by the way, we talked about this a little bit, but not a lot. We didn't talk about, you know, your death benefit. We didn't talk about the guaranteed cherry on top very much. We didn't talk about how the loans never have to be repaid. Although we're going to teach you to be an honest banker. Don't steal the peas. Second principle, the internal value grows tax-free guaranteed. Your policy appreciates every single day. Guaranteed. How many things can you say guarantee in your life right now? And the policies are exempt from liens and judgment. I did cover this on the T-chart, which you can hang on your fridge. But these are things that can show you these premium deposits and the power by changing that one thing. As our buddy Warren says, if poor people would just do what rich people do, they wouldn't be poor anymore. And at the end of the day, our time together is almost over. But only one of two things is going to happen to us. You guys know. Right? I don't know anyone who's beat, beat this before, but we're either going to live or we're going to die. We're going to graduate, as we like to say here. We're going to live or we're going to die. Are you better off with or without this in either situation? So if you guys have liked what you've learned here today, if you found power in this, then go ahead and schedule a free call with me. Just schedule a call with me at Jason dot be your own banker dot com backslash 30 it's in the chat a couple times we'll put it in the chat again i'm here to answer any questions for you but there's two things that can happen at the end of this call it's either you keep learning you sit you wait or you take action like i said if you want to run a marathon if you want to run a half marathon do an iron man put skin in the game it's time for you to have a consultation to meet you where you're at today financially and to show you the map forward, not only from today, but what's it look like in 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, long-term thinking. So blessed I've been here with you. I'm answering any questions you want. I'll stick around. I actually made a couple questions for you. So pop them in the chat if you got questions. I'll take them. I'll stay here with you guys for another, for as long as you want to. I still got 48 folks here. Next question is usually, how do I get started? Go ahead and book a call with myself or one of our mentors and I'll meet you where you're at financially. We'll meet you where you're at financially, mentally, and help you map out that, that process of applying infinite banking to yourself, going through a four to six week application process, making sure you have all the ins and outs and questions answered, that you know what's exactly what's going to happen every step of the way. I get the question a lot of times we did examples of 10,000 and 25,000 annual premium deposits. People say, well, what if I don't have a large amount saved right now? One of the answers is, do the wealthy have more choices? Yes or no? I believe the answer is always yes. So with your premium deposits, you have multiple ways to pay that. And it can change year to year. You can do your premium deposits monthly. You can do it annually. You can decide and change it back and forth every year. What if, you know, for some reason I feel like maybe I have an underlying condition or I have something that I'm worried about? Well, what's the worst that can happen? You know, you have to take action to see if it'll work. The, the gentleman I spoke for, spoke to right before this, this call is pretty young, has some um, different medical problems. I said, hey, man, just let us know what they are. We'll go to these A plus rated or better mutually owned companies and we'll ask the underwriting team, would you consider this person? And if someone's not approved, well, then we'll talk about other insurable interests. Remember, we're building a system of privatized banks for you and your family. And so any other questions you guys thought of? I have a whole other you know, videos out there of the 10 most frequently asked questions. I could sit here and probably talk about this for another two hours. And we didn't even need the whiskey, folks. So we made it to the end. So Tess, everyone who's been here, if you don't got any questions, if you haven't yet, go ahead and book a call with me. Jason, period, be your own banker.com backslash 30. And I will be talking to you in the near future. Here we go. Our policy is always able to change this. Tiana, that's a great question. So when you say change this, what is this? Um, you can change how you make your premium deposits. You've got flexibility in your premium deposit like how much you're depositing. We build some wiggle room into it 
based on your needs and your wants. You have flexibility in your loan repayments. You have a lot of flexibility built in to make sure that you're able to continue making pre privatized banking grow and grow and grow over the years for all your financial needs. So yes, and you can make changes to your policies. That's why you have your implementation specialists. Think of them, they might not love this, but as your student driver, they're there to hold your hand. Great question, Tiana. Does it have to be a specialized policy? For what we teach, we're gonna say it has to be a specially engineered whole life with a company that supports this. Super important. You don't wanna have it with someone with variables where you're not in control, which is some of the other things that are being taught out there. They just don't work because there's too many variables. And so, um, Greg, if you put your, here's my, here's my email, jason at the money multiplier.com. So back to your question, Tiana. So you have flexibility built in. You want to make sure, I talked to someone the other day who has some older policies where the company doesn't really support infinite banking, but those are super valuable policies because a regular old whole life after years and years of having it will have cash value. You can take loans out. You can use it for what we teach. So it's a, it's a, it depends question. Greg, looking forward to connecting with you. Any other questions? And thank you for the questions, Tiana. Does IBC and the policies perform well with velocity banking? <clears throat> so what we usually say, Daniel, that's an uh, amazing, that is a, a informed question. So thank you for that question. It is, the answer is, it depends, right? Usually velocity banking is the step before infinite bank because why we teach you where does your surplus money go first? But if you understand that the money has to stay in motion, as we've talked about, that's what the banks do, then yes, like I'm looking at right now, we're currently in process of looking at a first lien HELOC, which will take a portion of that money for banking, right? And run it through the policy and the other portion will go out into investments to bring in more capital to our family. We don't want the lazy money sitting in our bricks and mortar. So, and so Daniel, I hope that helps. So the answer is it depends. If you already have the discipline, if you're already saving money and you're putting your surplus money in a policy, then yes, it works. If you're someone who's paycheck to paycheck, then use Velocity Bank and use the velocity of money until you freed up some capital. And then we're talking about that. So that makes sense there. So any other questions? If not, remember, it's Take Back Control Tuesday, folks. So it's Take Back Control Tuesday. We will be here again next week. I might be presenting again. I might not. But whoever is, you guys are going to get the best of the best as far as teaching and answering this. Uh, please answer. Sent a question. That's awesome. Do you have this in Spanish? I know we have someone that is bilingual. My wife is actually bilingual, um, but she is not. She's directly working with me. Um, but I. After 15 years of marriage, I am not yet bilingual. So one day, one day, we can make it work. We can figure it out. I know there's someone on the team that is bilingual and could help. I appreciate you all. Be blessed. Keep learning. Keep learning. It's a process. It's a process. I'm, I'm super grateful for you guys. Excited for your future. Have a beautiful rest of your day. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them. But I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you wanna know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button, actually smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.